Hey guys, welcome back. One of my favourite elements of Halo Infinite's campaign is its renewed focus on boss battles. Halo's always had them to some degree, but they've never really been that great, ranging from kind of decent in the case of Tartarus to <laughs> just downright awful in the case of the Warden Eternal. As a huge fan of both Metal Gear Solid and Resident Evil, two franchises that do boss battles exceptionally, seeing Halo Infinite nail them so hard makes me eternally happy. So today, I thought we'd celebrate by diving into the lore behind all of them, both the main bosses and also the high value targets. There's some real spicy lore in here, so buckle up, get yourself a cup of tea and prepare yourself. I do want to give a massive thank you to GameCheat13 for making this video possible by helping me get some cinematic shots of the banished HVTs. Do go and check out his Alpha Archive channel and make sure you drop him a sub, he's posting tons of really cool infinite videos over there that you don't want to miss. So with that said, let's dive into this hefty dose of lore. Starting out, we have Tremonius, one of the highest ranking warlords within the banished, a lieutenant in close proximity of the war chief Esherim. Shortly after the Banished decisive victory against the UNSC Infinity, Tremonius led an assault on a UNSC camp in the wreckage of the UNSC Mortal Reverie, where the few survivors of the Morsine class frigate were holding out. The Banished crushed the human resistance, so much so that the outpost was named after Tremonius to inspire others to follow in his footsteps. He was, however, rather spineless. Following the destruction of Warship Gabracken at the hands of the Master Chief, of whom Atriox had assured the Banished was dead, Tremonius lost his temper with Esherim. He became frustrated, doubting Atriox's power, fearing the Master Chief threatened their revenge, superiority and renewal as a faction, and displaying his annoyance at Atriox's death, blaming them being stuck on Zeta Halo on their previous leader. He was, however, quickly put in his place by Jaeger Odomni and proceeded to beg for his life before heading out to claim the head of the Master Chief a mission in which he was utterly unsuccessful. <laughs> Underground, beneath his outpost, he would challenge the Master Chief, but was dealt with rather quickly, and his outpost was subsequently reclaimed. Following his death, Esherim revealed to the Master Chief what he really thought of Tremonius. Do not fool yourself. He was not the best of the banished, not by any measure. Chaklog, elite warlord, interrogator, torturer, and polite gentleman was the commander of the Tower, a banished installation on Zeta Halo where prisoners of war were taken to spill their secrets before being sent off to the House of Reckoning. Chaklock held two notable prisoners of war at his tower. The first was combat medic Lucas Browning. Once he'd had his way with Browning, he was sent off to speak with the Harbinger, of whom Silex he was responsible for opening. After this meeting, his brain was fried from the truth she'd revealed to him, and Chaklock mocked the human for his fragile mind that could not contain the power of her words. The second POW was Spartan IV Hudson Griffin, who was captured after a failed assassination op on Esherim. Using his Mark VII Mjolnir, of which was torn from the Spartan while he was still alive, he activated a distress beacon to lure in the Master Chief. The demon fell for this lore and eventually came, making it to the top of the tower where Chaklock formally introduced himself. Welcome to my tower, Master Chief. It is where you will be broken. However, after a rather tough fight, the politest elite to ever live fell to the Spartan. Brute Chieftain Bassus was an older chieftain, tasked with overseeing and defending the excavation operation of the Conservatory. When the Master Chief tore through the banished forces at the site, Esherim personally ordered Bassus to deal with the demon. But despite getting the upper hand at first, the Spartan proved too worthy an adversary, and Bassus, along with all his years of chieftain experience, was put down with ease. Adjutant Resolution is the sub-monitor of Zeta Halo, who was activated after the Harbinger destroyed the installation's primary monitor, 117649 Despondent Pyre. He assumed her role in protecting and maintaining Installation 07, but in doing so, found himself at odds with the Master Chief. The Harbinger began the Reformation, repairing the damage done to the Halo, which was in line with Resolution's directives, but went against Chiefs. When he tried to deactivate the Spire and prevent the Reformation, Adjutant Resolution got red-eye and turned on the Spartan, entering a massive aggressor sentinel-like body to protect his ring. Although the body was not meant for combat, he did put up a good fight, but did eventually fall to the Master Chief. 
However, resilient as any other monitor, he wasn't done there. He showed up once again in the Command Spire to, once again, prevent Chi from deactivating all of the Reformation Spires, preventing the rebuilding of Zeta Halo. This time, he appeared in an upgraded bronze version of the Sentinel body, similar to how the higher ranking and tougher aggressor Sentinel captains also have bronze bodies, but again, it was no use. Chief defeated him and proceeded to deactivate the Reformation Spires. Later on though, Adjutant appeared once again at the Silent Auditorium, but this time as a friendly, proclaiming his regret for going against the Master Chief and trying to stop him from preventing the Harbinger's reformation, as now he knew why she was so eager to have it completed, to free the Endless. He urges Chief to go and thwart her plans, and then presumably returns to his standard monitor duties. The Brute Brothers, Hyperius and Tavarus are the first members of the elite Hand of Atriox that Chief encounters on Zeta Halo. This order of warriors are the best, the cruelest and most vicious individuals Escherum could find, and he taught them how to be better. Hyperius, at some point, encountered Spartan Locke on Zeta Halo, likely during Operation Breaker Trip, where he bested him in combat and took his Gen 2 Hunter Mjolnir helmet and chestplate as trophies that he adorned on his shoulder. Whether Locke was killed during the skirmish, captured or set free is currently unknown. Later, he and his brother Tavares killed Spartan IV Theodore Sorel during his final stand deep within the Conservatory. Then, after three key banished AA turrets were taken out by Chief, Hyperius and Tavares were dispatched to destroy the demon. Hyperius contacted Chief using the now dead Spartan Sorel's comm signature, berating him about his human weakness and degrading the Spartan, telling him what he was going to do to him once he'd bested yet another Spartan in combat. But this brute spoke too soon. In the wreckage of the UNSC Mortal Reverie, Chief engaged the two brothers, Hyperius in his unique bronze Catalyst Chopper, and Tavares with his heavy black armour and scrap cannon. After a gruelling fight, however, both fell at the hand of the demon. Elite Blademaster Jaeger Erdomni was a sadistic, ex-silent shadow killer. As a close friend and confidant of Escherum, the two broke boundaries with their cross-species friendship and cooperation. Jaeger was also the first recruit of the Hand of Atriox and had served Escherum and the Banished with distinction, but very little honour for quite some time. During his time in the Covenant, Jaeger served in the highly elite Silent Shadow, an elusive contingent of the most vicious and distinguished assassins in the entire hegemony. It was during his time as a Silent Shadow Blademaster where he lost multiple limbs, his left arm and two of his mandibles, but in a display of total disregard for elite culture, throwing aside honour and valour, he replaced these limbs with cybernetic prostheses, even going as far as to mount a custom dual-sided energy blade on his prosthetic arm. These modifications were so unheard of within elite culture that it led some to believe that Jaeger was the product of some sick experiment, but the truth is shrouded in mystery. During his time on Zeta Halo, this psychotic warrior was responsible for the deaths of Spartan IV Benita Stone and Vedrana Makovich during his operation to stalk the Master Chief. When Escherum realised the Spartan had survived, he ordered Jaeger to track him from the shadows and relay intel on him back to command, a task he fulfilled with ease. However, as time passed, Jaeger began to notice Escherum's health issues worsening. The two were good friends, which concerned Jaeger and forced him to accelerate his plans. In a bet to lure the demon in, Jaeger ambushed the pilot aboard his pelican, drawing the Spartan into the House of Reckoning, where their final battle would take place. Jaeger tortured the pilot, but kept him alive long enough for the Spartan to come looking, and it was on the penultimate floor of the House of Reckoning where the two would finally face off. He baited Chief in with the pilot's message from his family, before introducing himself in style, demonstrating his agility and versatility with his custom Bloodblade energy sword, traits that he no doubt learned during his time in the Silent Shadow. The two faced off, but after a quick and violent battle, Jaeger fell to the demon. Or did he? See, his body cloaks and vanishes when he dies, so you never know. I don't think you can ever doubt the capability of a warrior of the Silent Shadow to just vanish like that, so it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't die, especially someone as esteemed as Jaeger Udomni. Escherum, brute warchief of the Banished, distinguished warrior and mentor of Atriox, was a ruthless Jivalhani. 
Were it not for him recruiting Atriox into his ways and training him up during their time in the Covenant, Atriox would never have defied them, and the Banished would have never come to be. When Atriox left the galaxy to travel to the Ark in April 2558, Esherim was given control of the remaining Banished forces who stayed behind, and following the death of Decimus, became the second in command of the entire faction. Later on, in 2559, under the orders of Atriox, Esherim took many of the remaining Banished forces to Reach to retrieve a flake of a slipspace crystal that would allow Atriox to rendezvous with them before beginning the next step of their journey. They were successful, and Atriox and his most trusted warriors travelled through the portal from the Ark to Reach, rendezvoused with Esherim and his warriors before departing Reach for Zeta Halo. When they arrived, they engaged the UNSC Infinity, which was already in orbit of the Halo, and using their destroyers alongside their infantry, raided and took down the flagship of humanity in a mere four minutes, marking a crushing defeat for the Allies that would only get worse as the Banish pursued them down to the Ring and hunted down those few who fled the battle. For six months, Esherim and his forces held Zeta Hilo with very little opposition, despite believing they'd lost Atriox when Cortana detonated part of the Ring. That was until he discovered the Master Chief had survived. This discovery invigorated the War Chief for battle, something he had not felt in quite some time, and he looked forward to making his fight with the Demon his final fight. Over the course of the following days, Esherim's relationship with the Harbinger grew thin. They shared the same goal, to repair the Halo, but for different reasons, and both their respective failures at the hand of the Master Chief led to great frustration. Even more so for Esherim, as he was suffering from some sort of illness, causing breathing issues that may have put a ticking clock on his life. However, when Jaeger captured the pilot, Esherim was reinvigorated. He was now sure to get his fight with the demon, and after he ploughed through the House of Reckoning, the War Chief got his wish. He presented himself before the demon, armoured and geared to the teeth, ready for his final battle. After a long fight, Esherim realised enough was enough and drew his custom gravity axe, the Diminisher of Hope, to seal the deal. But sadly, it wasn't enough. He was bested by Spartan 117 and ultimately died in his arms. Two warriors, both fighting to do right by their own people. Soldiers hoping they'd done the right thing, constantly questioning their choices. At the end of the day, the Spartan and the War Chief weren't that dissimilar. And finally, for the main bosses, we have the Harbinger, of whom very little is known. She's a member of the species Zalanin, commonly referred to as the Endless, a species who were condemned by the foreigners for threatening to unearth one of their truths, and of whom have an immunity to the Halos. However, for some unknown reason, at the behest of the Banished, the Harbinger's Silex was opened by reclaimer Lucas Browning, and from there, she began searching for the location of her species. After activating the Reformation Spires, she managed to rebuild the Silent Auditorium enough to use it to find the location of the Endless's detainment site, which she relayed to Atriox before falling by the hand of the Master Chief. So, moving over to those deemed high-value targets by covert naval intelligence officers, we first have Inca Saham, elite general of the Third Lance within the Second Combat Element, and member of the Valagards of the Chosen. Saham grew in notoriety during the Covenant War as a shipmaster of the DAS-class Stormcutter, Heresy's Sorrow, which repeatedly harassed the UNSC supply lines and UEG trade routes. Following the collapse of the Covenant, he struck an allegiance with the War Chief Esherim, and dedicated the service of his ship and her crew to the Banished. In 2559, a Spartan IV headhunter was dispatched to assassinate Saham, but the mission failed. According to naval intelligence reports, the Allied operative was held and tortured as a prisoner of war, not to obtain UNSC intel, but simply for Saham's enjoyment. Since then, this infamous elite general has been inducted into the Bloodstars, a previously Covenant, now banished Spec Ops group, repurposed to train warriors in the art of eliminating Spartans. Kaiden Thavsabarim, member of the First Lance, Third Combat Element, and Warriors of Malaston, was one of the leading Covenant commanders in their final strikes against Earth and its colonies on Reach and Luna. 
He abandoned his station after the Prophet betrayed the Elites, and fled back to his homeworld of Saban, to be reunited with his kin at the Keep of Malastong. As the Elites descended into cycles of civil war, Sabarim joined forces with Atriox, as the Banish did not discriminate against Elite warriors, so long as they were skilled. The Kaidan had become infamous for his actions in the Battle of Harrow, where his siege of the city of Adravon resulted in the deaths of over 700,000 human civilians. Okro Vagadun was a highly esteemed elite blademaster in the Blind Lance of the Fifth Combat Element, and a blood-brave guardian of Suban. For the last decade of the war, Okro Vagadun was considered one of the most lethal infantry assets in the entire Covenant, and was granted the title of Blademaster by the Minister of Resolution for his remarkable combat ability. Vagadun hailed from a long line of sword fighters and repeatedly defied odds, surviving even when vastly outnumbered. When the Covenant fell into disarray at the hands of the Prophets, he returned to Saban, the Blood Moon of Sanghelios, and his birth world, where he was approached by Atriox with an offer to join the Banished. Only after a year of watching his own people fall to the civil war of the Blooding Years, he agreed. Since then, Vagadun has fought exclusively for the Banished as a part of the Blood Brave, a sect of highly esteemed warriors that all hail from his homeworld. In 2559, Vagadun took part in the raid on the key ship, Anodyne Spirit, that was used by the Prophet of Truth to get to the Ark in Halo 3. Along with other notable Banish member, Zeratus, they encountered remnants of the actual Covenant who had hid out inside the Dreadnought since the war, waiting for their great leader to return and bless them with the news that the great journey had begun. But instead, they met their end by Vagadun's blade. Inside, they found their prize, a flake of a slipspace crystal that Atriox needed to get from the Ark to reach, and after a bloody victory, Vagadun stood as one of the few survivors. The Grunt mercenary Bitbap the Vanquisher was a member of the Alpha Pack of the Ninth Combat Element and the Heart of Tala, and was one of the most dangerous Grunts known to the UNSC. Once a bodyguard for high-ranking Covenant officials, Bitbap earned his reputation for ruthlessness in service of Tartarus, chieftain of the Brutes, slaying scores of his own people who chose to side with the Elites in the Great War. Following the collapse of the Covenant, he returned to his homeworld of Balaho to refashion himself as an assassin for hire, and was so successful in fact that he was granted the title of Vanquisher by his clan, the Heart of Tala. This grunt is notorious for acts of widespread destruction on the colony of Venetia, where his relentless and ruthless pursuit of his targets, and the collateral damage caused along the way, resulted in over 830 human casualties. Briglard was a grunt who held the title of High Sumpter, a warrior in the fourth lance of the eighth combat element, and member of the Beholders of the One Vapor. One of the more disturbing reports from recent encounters with the Banished concerns this particular grunt. He gained notoriety toward the end of the Covenant War in the Great Schism, where his vicious and often sadistic behaviour on the battlefield earned him a high priority target designation by the Arbiter's allied forces. Shortly after the conclusion of the Human Covenant War, Briglard joined the Banished, where his macabre infatuation with violence and his affinity for the Brutes, whose ruthlessness inspired his own, has earned him great respect among his peers. He's been known not just to kill UNSC personnel at rates far outstripping other Grunts, but to do so in horrific and disturbing ways. Baroth, the Arc Cordat of the first cell of the Recon Combat Element and member of the Sclera of Kuot, was a lethal Jackal Sniper, who earned the title of Cordat for his exceptional prowess behind a scope. This Rutian marksman garnered a reputation among Jackal Treasure Hawks and raiding crews for his virtually unblemished accuracy record. That reputation earned interest from the Banished and eventual initiation into their Bloodstar ranks, with the aim of producing a lethal Jekyll Sniper Spartan Killer. To date, the best intel the Naval Intelligence Archives have to offer attribute at least 271 UNSC deaths directly to Baroth, and his file dictates that given the opportunity, he must be engaged carefully but with extreme prejudice. Zeratus, the Scourge Maker, was a battle officer of the Eater Pack in the third combat element of the Lance of the Writhing Star. 
As one of the most senior officers in the Banished, Zeratus was among the first to join the faction when Atriox defied the Covenant. Since then, he's been a critical component of Banished exploration efforts, leading numerous operations to scour foreigner relic sites in search of critical assets and destroying anything in his way. He's taken part in two notable raids. The first was on the ocean moon Lagerlim, where he ordered the sinking of a UEG research colony in pursuit of an ancient foreigner site buried beneath the seas. Of the 1,244 scientists and analysts stationed there, none survived. And the second raid was of the Dreadnought, Anodyne Spirit, where, alongside Okro Vagadun, he led a strike team to seize a crystal shard within. Once the crystal was seized, he travelled with Atriox to Reach, where he rendezvoused with the Banished Force there, before leaving for Zeta Halo aboard Eshram's Intrusion Corvette. Captain Balkarus of the Galelt Pack, member of the Advanced Combat Element of the Exodus Guard, is a veteran Brute Officer, who once served directly under Atriox's command, accompanying him on several critical missions. He served the Banished during their war on the Ark, where at one point he had to quell a rumour that the Master Chief was responsible for many of his squad's deaths, a rumour that was causing several of his grunts to become deserters. These deserters were quickly executed, and any who fell for these rumours were threatened with being thrown into the nearest ancient chasm. When the Hunter Commander's colony rose to power within the Banished, Alcarus became nervous. He didn't trust them. The rumours of the pair actually speaking made him feel uneasy. Their hive mind nature made him fear they were always listening in on him and relaying his words and thoughts to all the other eel-based creatures within the Banished. He also had to at one point scold his brutes for throwing grunts into cloaking fields to watch them fizzle and pop. As humorous as it was, it was a waste of resources and it diverted their attention away from the mission at hand, which was slingshotting a foreigner ship into the Spirit of Fire to seek revenge for the destruction of the Enduring Conviction. In recent years, he's attempted to leverage this trusted standing to earn a place in the Bloodstars Spec Ops group, a former Covenant combat team appropriated by Atriox as an elite unit trained for the singular purpose of killing Spartans, and of which Atriox, during his days in the Covenant, was a member of. Though sadly Balkarus never made it into the Bloodstars, he has distinguished himself among his fellow officers for his ferociousness in battle, and had been known to even kill his own soldiers for the slightest demonstrations of hesitancy on the battlefield. The Brute Chieftain Engedon of the Alpha Pack of the First Combat Element, and member of the Bulwark of Bowen, was beside Atriox and Decimus as they splintered off from the Covenant. Within the Covenant, Engedon was a mere foot soldier, but his service in the Banished unlocked his true potential. Upon returning to his clan in Zomar, a major city on the Brute Colony Moon of Tish, Engedon rallied those who had remained there to join the Banished, thereby forging his identity as the chieftain of the Banished Warriors of Tish. And it was here that this savage leader began to gain his destructive renown. Like other Banished leaders, Engedon led a distinctive subset of warriors, the Bulwark of Bowen, gathering its own followers before coming to service of Atriox's campaign. In the Banished, the Chieftain proceeded to carve a violent path through dozens of human colonies, most notably Seaford and Vorionos, large-scale raiding operations that left the worlds crippled in their wake. Ignovus the Devourer, Brute Chieftain of the Fourth Lance, First Combat Element, and Warreal's Wrath, was one of the more experienced members of the Banished. He was part of the Covenant attack on Jericho 7 that decimated several human cities with unyielding force. Serving under the Brute Chieftain known as Thrall Slayer, Ignova soon became renowned for his violent and bloodthirsty nature, including a particular penchant for eating the severed limbs of his opponents while they watched in agony. Acquiring the title Ignovus the Devourer throughout his own meteoric rise to Chieftain, this brute warrior continued to lay waste to human settlements, even after breaking away from the Covenant. His pack, Warriel's Wrath, presumably comprised of Jirulhani from the Doizak orbiting moon of Warriel, joined the Banished in 2550 and began indiscriminately targeting any species or faction that stood in their way. 
Captain Arthok, member of the Dratix pack, second combat element and brothers of Unending Ire, was in fact lauded as a Jivalhanai champion who wreaked havoc on UNSC operations for the better part of a decade. First serving under Korth the Render, part of the Brothers of Unending Ire, Arthok led nearly four dozen individually documented assaults on colonial sites. The most notable was a vicious ambush on the colony of Tessera that claimed the lives of three full ODSP squads. Recent intelligence reports indicate that Arthok joined the rest of the Brothers of Unending Ire in pledging allegiance to Atriox and the Banished. Their motives are currently unknown, but each member should be considered an extreme threat to any UNSC forces that may be in close proximity. The skirmisher Rith Kull was a member of Delta Pack of the Third Combat Element and also the Thieves of the Claw. She was born in the Tower of Vetnos on the asteroid of Arst, one of the only cities of this colony to remain unaffected by the constant threat of piracy. After the Great Schism, her name rose to prominence in Tartarus's circle, largely due to her intellect and strategic wisdom of space warfare, which earned her the role of naval combat architect. Functioning in this capacity, Rith managed to take down over 185 UNSC capital ships, making her one of the most lethal Covenant assets in space. When the Covenant finally came to an end, however, she took her frigate, the Dagger of Mercy, and her crew, and continued ransacking foreign relic sites and trading them in the burgeoning post-war cross-species market. Although lucrative, she desired to return to warfare and sought out Atriox for placement in the Banished. The Skimmer Patrol and their leader, the Skimmer Alpha, are shrouded in an air of mystery. Their species and origin are totally unknown. All naval intelligence can deduce is that their threat level is high. We can theorise, based on their aesthetic similarities with the Harbinger, that they're of Zelenin origin, but we still can't say that for sure. It wasn't long after Spartan Hudson Griffin made Ringfall that the first curveball was thrown his way. The Skimmers a new challenge. They appear to be an as of yet unencountered species, at least as far as the Spartan's clearance indicates. They either work for or with the Banished, but their armour configuration doesn't match the Banished aesthetic. Griffin encountered one small contingent of skimmers that seemed to be a more lethally outfitted group. Their place in the Banished hierarchy is unknown, but taking them out and gathering any intel on them, be it biological intel or strategic intel, will only help the allied cause. Myriad are a hunter pair of the fifth lance of the first combat element, and members of the Horde Worms of Severe. Recent reports on the Let Go of Species have revealed some rather interesting and, in some cases, rather unsettling observations, in particular related to the strain of combat-ready forms known as Megalek Golo, the Hunters. A behavioural evolution has been observed in scattered instances trending towards a more individualised identity and intelligence, rather than simply an order-following hive mind. This has been encountered in recent years with the Swarm Lords that served alongside a dangerous faction of ex-Covenant Evocati led by Kay Nazars, who was actually a boss in Warzone. In addition to classified reports of the Bond pair known as Colony, Lieutenants of the Banished. However, current attention is turned towards the unified Bond pair known as Myriad. Single-handedly responsible for the deaths of two Spartan IV fire teams, Myriad represent not only an immediate danger to UNSC forces, but also another dangerous precedent in the evolution of the Letgolo as a species. And finally, we have the Wraithmaster Ordo Mal of the Hydor Squill Pack, eighth combat element and member of Capra's Grief. During the Human Covenant War, Mal was unequalled among elite Wraith pilots and was responsible for the death of at least 654 UNSC personnel. His death toll only increased to over 1,200 in the years following, many of those taking place during the banished raid on the UEG colony of Palganar. Unlike others, however, Ordo Mal did not join the banished until well after the Covenant's collapse, in the wake of the elite civil war, the Blooding Years. Returning to his native keep, he united a network of feudal raid lancers under his aggressive and mercenary leadership, before being directly approached by Atriox for service in the Banished. In the intervening years, Mal found increasing favour with Esherim, the right hand of Atriox, 
This ascent earned him the title of Wraithmaster among the Banished, and he remains one of the single most dangerous elements in their combat stratagem. And so, that is the lore behind every single boss in Halo Infinite. What a load of lore that was. So many cool references to different parts of the franchise, different games, different novels, even Warzone in Halo 5. That's such a cool little reference there. I love all this lore, and it just helps make the universe feel even bigger and even more connected. Such a big fan. So anyways, this is a long video, so I'm going to round it out here. I want to give a massive thank you to Taylor for becoming a new iconic one over on Patreon. Thank you very much, sir. And of course, to everyone else who supports me over there. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.